like the time management is is definitely important but also i think that it's really really important to to have your own time like it, your your own time to pour into yourself she i'm eric lipsy and this is venture university Today, I have the pleasure of having on with me today, the founders of the Marriage Mindset Movement, Nick and Lydia. Thank you guys very much for coming on today. How are you? We're doing well. We're doing well. Yeah, we're good. Thanks for having us. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Now, if you guys could start out by telling us what is the Marriage Mindset Movement? Yeah, sure. So the Marriage Mindset Movement is a new way of thinking about marriage. Um, we realized um, that a lot of us approach marriage in a way that maybe is not so sustainable. Um, mm -hmm. if, you look, if you look at the divorce rates, I think that would support support that idea. Absolutely. Um, yeah. And then if it is sustainable, maybe there's a lot of couples out there that feel like they're settling and they're kind of finding themselves feeling more like roommates and mm -hmm. and losing that what what they signed up for, right? That that super passion filled. Um, marriage. So we, through the marriage mindset movement, we help couples prioritize their marriage and look at it through a new lens, look at their marriage as an opportunity for growth in, and fulfillment, uh, both individually and, and as a team, really, right? Because you can be a couple, but you're not always, right. don't always feel like a team. <laughs> so it's about moving in the same unified vision. Um, so yeah, we really focus on, and it's in the name, we focus on the mindset. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. because everything you know everything stems from that everything that you do all the decisions you make comes from really what you think about and um we realized in our marriage that we weren't necessarily being super intentional about our thoughts around marriage in general and then like in our our marriage together um so so yeah that's that's what it is all right great well that's a great lead into my <laughs> next question which was what inspired the the marriage mindset movement yeah i'll go ahead and i'll take this one so about eight close to eight years ago now um as a result of not having foundational effective communication and really being on the same page we really really hit like a dark dark season it got to a point where lydia and i were living separately for nine months both had been speaking to divorce divorce lawyers. <clears throat> I had at one point filed for divorce, uh, but through all that pain, through all that darkness, through all that uncomfortable situation and lack of support, we were able to see that we wanted to make our marriage work. Mm -hmm. And once we once we were on the same page with wanting to make our marriage work, we poured ourselves into into so many resources. Um, maybe even spreading ourselves a little bit thin. We went into workshops, counseling, therapies, retreats. And what we found for ourselves was that it, it ended up being a very, very long road to getting the information and the application that we needed. Mm -hmm. So by, by pouring ourselves into all these different resources, we looked at each other, we looked inward, and we saw an opportunity to, to help others that may be in a similar situation, in a challenging situation, but maybe not even as dire, but may, maybe as roommates, like she said, and 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 finding themselves at a disconnect and providing an opportunity to, to dive into a framework to uh -huh. expedite what they want out of their marriage. And uh, we've been able to, to connect with, with couples to achieve that and currently connecting with couples on their way to achieving the marriage that they deserve. That's great. I, I really love how you guys took something that was an issue for you and saw that it wasn't just you dealing with it, you know, that many other people have those same challenges in life, you know, and it, it's just really interesting to me. And I, and I admire people who can take that thing and then make it into something that helps mm -hmm. others. So yeah, <laughs> I, I think that is, that is really commendable on, on you guys' part. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. And it, 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 it wasn't, it hasn't always been easy. We're still finding ourselves uh, butting heads at times, but with with leaning into those uncomfortable situations of the past and currently we're able to work towards something that we didn't really think was in the cards for us at one point. Right. Yeah, and that, and I don't know if it's ever like a place of arrival where you just get there and know everything's all hook and dory, right? Because it's right. it's a thing where things are changing, situations in life are changing. Even as your kids get older, things start to change there and 
yeah so there's so many elements that affect things so it's like it's not it's a place of growth not a place of arrival so you constantly seem like you have to go back to that right kind of having right. those, having those conversations oh 100 100 percent. and and through our pain and through our journey it's it's like we had to take the stairs and now we have an opportunity for people to take an elevator yes Yes. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Because you're taking something that you've already been through, you've already experienced and say, hey, you don't need to go there. I can help you, you know, or I always like to say uh, experience is a, is the greatest teacher, but the experience doesn't have to be yours. You know? right. yeah. Yeah. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah so yeah that so yeah thank you very much for uh coming on today again now one of the things that reason i had you guys come on because i know a lot of people who have um a marriage plus business so they're business partners and they're also married so i figure having you all on today because i know you all work together you have your own separate projects too but you have your thing that you're doing mm -hmm. here together and you know just trying to help people navigate that relationship because it's so different you know it's like trying to separate and trying to maintain respect within the <laughs> within the marriage yeah. and in the the work environment as well that can be very challenging uh, for people to do so i wanted to have you guys on to talk more about that to help people get an understanding of some ways that they can better navigate those waters so maybe we can start out by talking about a little bit about how you guys even met, you know? <laughs> I just like that a little bit of the juice of the story to kind of give people a little bit of context before we ended up at the part where you had to try to work things out a little bit, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we were, we were pretty young. We were like just finishing up high school um, and we worked together um, at this little gift shop in, in Illinois, Niles, Illinois, if, if anybody knows where that is, but it's in Chicagoland. Like, 30 minutes from Chicago. Okay. Um, and yeah, we went to like rival high school. So we didn't go to school together. So I don't know if that qualifies as like a high school sweetheart, but we um, we worked together and he worked stock and I was um, working with the customers. So uh, we weren't like directly together all day, but we would pass by each other all the time and um, and go to like little work events, little get togethers, and we would pass notes to each other and it made work very exciting. <laughs> <laughs> so these are so you guys have known each other for a very long time. Well at least I, I, yeah I think we met each other when we were 17 and we're oh. 35. She's gonna be 36 tomorrow. Tomorrow. Tomorrow's my birthday. <laughs> hey happy birthday to you. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. My wife's birthday is on the third. So you know next week. Ooh. So <laughs> it's my dad's birthday. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's great yeah uh, wait, maybe one of these days we have to all get together and celebrate or something mm -hmm. so <laughs> yeah and oh. actually now now that I'm telling you how we met and I don't know why I didn't like connect the dots earlier but I guess we met together working together so it's only mm -hmm. <laughs> true yeah it's only fitting that we you know circle back around and... <laughs> absolutely absolutely okay moving on I uh wanted to ask what are some of the, uh, maybe just start with one, but maybe the biggest challenge you see with couples, and I know this probably applies more than just for couples who are also in business together, but just in general, what is uh, probably the biggest hindrance? Yeah, so I'll take, I'll take this one, because I was the most expressive about this when we started working together. Um, she had wanted to work together for, for quite some time, and I, I was a little bit resistant, a little hesitant, because like it, it's 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 transparency on all levels, right? And with with that transparency on all levels, um, we found ourselves uh, being disconnected with expectations with one another as a result of poor communication. Uh, so it was it was a constant battle of what are you expecting from me? What are you expecting within the business? What are you expecting as a business partner, as a mom, as a father within the home? So there were all these little nuances that we didn't really expect getting into it we we were thinking this is going to work out being naive um but a big 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 uh obstacle for me was how do i find the transition from professionals working together to mm -hmm. my romantic partner how do how do i train cuz we're in the home how do we transition to being able to to shut down work mode and get into romantic mode 
And we found that communication and expectations were big obstacles to overcome, big challenges to, to figure out. Um, we actually hired some, some coaches to help us navigate through that, that, that are in uh, the entrepreneurial couple space that, that helped us out tremendously in finding verbiage, language, and systems that we can put in place so that uh, we didn't have to compromise our romantic relationship while trying to achieve a, a professional relationship. No, that's great. Now, do you find, because I know some people hate confrontation, and it doesn't have to be really confrontation, but do you find that you kind of just have to say it, right? Because I, I know for my wife and I, it's like sometimes one of us just get kind of tunneled, or even both of us just get tunneled into whatever the project we're working on, whatever we're, you know, that is. And it's sometimes you don't even think that oh yeah, you know, I need to have some balance here. So the other person mm -hmm. might have to just kind of give a gentle nudge <laughs> sort of thing. But I didn't know if what worked for you all in trying to bring it back to, you know, when you see that thing kind of happening where the imbalance started to happen, where you started to shift more to one way, how do you bring it back? Is it just, hey, a gentle nudge kind of thing or how do you handle that? You want to take this one? Um. I'll take, Do you have I'll an idea? It. <laughs> um, it's it's like it was it was a just a little phrase that started off like what in the in the beginning um, when we first introduced it as like one of our systems in place it it kind of came off with a little bit of aggression or an undertone and it, the the little phrase it, just something simple is like are you over it are you over it so at first it was are you over it with this undertone of of annoyance or or not being on the same page. And by being able to continue to put it into practice and with repetition, it's become this playful thing. So now it's like, are you over it? And and we just know <laughs> that we're 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 communicating something there that doesn't need a lot of dialogue, a lot of conversation, a lot of depth. And it allows us to give us an opportunity to for us or one of us to be like, yeah, let, let, let's, let's pause. But okay. there was friction there in the beginning, but with repetition, it, it allowed us to really smooth things over. Also, I think just um, like asking too, like, are you in the right headspace right now to talk about the business or are you just trying to relax and like be at home with your wife? You know, like, like where, like, where are you at? So sometimes if I have something on my mind that's about the business, I'll ask him, like, can, is this a good time to share this with you? Mm -hmm. And maybe give him a little bit of a, a preview of like what it's about. And then if he's not in a state of mind to receive that, then I have to be okay with that and kind of, you know, put a bookmark in it. And and we we like to schedule time to actually sit down together and work so that we're both coming into it with the expectation that this is what we're talking about now, mm -hmm. you know, and then. So it really is, I think, just asking, asking and, and being aware of like, what is the intention of the conversation or of the time that you're spending together? Because I think it could also be tricky with, you know, like date nights, like on date nights, should you not talk about business at all? Or like, if you guys are feeling, if you guys are both feeling super inspired, like, is it a great time to talk about things? Yeah. You know, because I think I've experienced both sides of that. Like last week we had a date night and we were we started talking about work and I got my phone out and started taking out, taking notes. And I think we got like, really oh, it's beautiful. Yeah. It was yeah. really nice. But again, if one person is not, is over it or isn't in that state of mind, then it can definitely cause friction for sure. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. You, you guys brought up a really, a couple of really great points there. So one, I know for me, I'm an early bird. So I get up and I have all this extra, I have energy to spare in the morning. I'm probably one of the most annoying morning people if you're not a morning person, right? So I go to the gym, I work out, do my meditation. I come home, my wife just woke up and I'm ready to have all the conversations about all the things. And she's like, you know, I know you just left the gym, but I just woke up. So <laughs> I'm going to need a minute. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. So you're breaking that out. There's a very good point to ask, you know, is this an OK time to have this conversation or, you know, just making sure that person's on board with you? Because even sometimes, even like you said, on a date night, you have you these things just come up because they're a part of your life. It's not mm -hmm. like they're separate from your life. The work is part of your life. So you get the conversations going. But like you said, making sure the other person is on board mm -hmm. with that prior to 
you you know just diving just diving into it yeah right. that, that's a really great point really great point point. And, and to add to that a little bit so i i work a full-time job outside of our our business and sometimes when i get home it's like 7 8 p.m at night and she's on fire ambitious and on a roll and i can see the passion but I'm I'm spent. So there, at at first there was a sense of guilt, like I'm putting out her flame. You're but right. now, like with with the repetitions and the systems in place, um, either either I know to make a cup of coffee at eight p.m. <laughs> or we, we we take notes and then we 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 pick it up again the next day. See now that is really I, that's just great communication. It it really is, and I know that's one of the primary things it seems to be. You know, in relationships, it starts with that misunderstanding because if you can't communicate then mm -hmm. people start to take assumptions you know you start creating these stories in your mind about mm -hmm. oh this is how the person feels and this is why they did blah 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 instead of just asking or just talking about it so mm -hmm. yeah that's yeah, outstanding I, I think a lot of the work that we've done in our marriage right like we now are learning how to frame it in the business because it's it, it there's a slight different but difference but like you said, that's that's all good communication just in general. Mm -hmm. like, yeah, not coming up with those stories, not being in a reactive state of mind, you know, giving the other person like the space that they need to to show up in a way that's going to be productive. And it's just it all it all comes into marriage as well as business. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And now and you all taught you all touched on time management too. You didn't say time management, but you basically touched on that as well. How do you manage your time i know you touched on it a little bit but give us more of a kind of more of a structure and i know it's probably hard to have an exact structure but as far as managing your time because you have you all are married you both have mm -hmm. separate things going and then you have your joint thing going and then you have children so you can, you know four, there's a four. lot you have four children right so so that's a lot right i mean and you have to you have to be parent, you have to be husband and wife, you have to be romantic, mm -hmm. you have to be a business person, and sometimes you have to be accountant, you have to be CEO, you have to be <laughs> all, <laughs> all of these different things. So how do you structure or manage your time, making sure, and I know you probably can't, it's not a thing where you can allocate four hours here, four hours here, four hours here. It's not one of those sort of things. So how do you handle that? Uh, we have a, we share our calendars. We share our calendars with each other um, and we have a calendar like meeting. Mm -hmm. So, and that's huge for us. So on Sundays, um, while the younger two are napping, we'll let the older two have like free time um, so that we don't need to be parents for at least a little bit. And we'll be here in our office and we take out our calendars and he can pretty much know like what he has to do with his day job in terms of like in appointments. So we'll be able to see where, he has free time slots where we can plug things in. Mm -hmm. um, and then we we really just try to be super intentional about every like half hour. You know, like if there's, a, okay. if, there's a, if there's a block of time that doesn't have something, then it's just gonna get eaten by something that really isn't a priority, right? Mm -hmm. Like that's just what happens. Uh -huh. so, and, and it's nice like having access to each other's calendars because then throughout the day, um, I can see like what he's doing and know if it's a good time to call him and connect on something. Mm -hmm. um, so she, she does a really good job of that. If I, if I'm preoccupied with something at the day job, she will she will look prior to trying to reach out and and knowing that uh, we've touched base earlier in the week. Yes, she'll, she'll save it for when I am available. Mm -hmm. uh, but then uh, it's it's funny because I did watch one of your previous interviews and and you said something similar that like every fifteen minutes is accounted for with yes. your and it, yeah. yeah that that level of intention has has worked wonders for us. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Yeah, because it can seem like you're being anal retentive, but when you have so many things going on, you kind of have to really block that time out because you mm -hmm. only get twenty four hours in a day. I don't care how much you have going on, <laughs> you only right. get hours so yeah so being able to manage that time is is very important mm -hmm. and, and that's great now one of the things i was going to ask you too inside the business so jumping inside so you have different roles that you have to play inside the business because there's so many different things that have to happen how do you guys stay out of each other's lane <laughs> so to speak 
you know, where, where it's kind of like, you know, I'm good at this, this person's good at that. So we don't cross over into bump heads on one project. I don't know how, you know, how different couples handle, you know, maybe allow, okay, you handle these parts, I'll handle this part. And then we can discuss all of this part or just how do you manage it so that it's not a thing where you're constantly in each other's almost. I mean, Hey, you know. It's not always easy. Um, yeah, I mean, we we even had an opportunity yesterday where we tried getting into self reflecting after after one of our calls, and she had to she had to pause and tell me, "Hey, I'm I'm not ready for this. Let's let's pick this up later." But yeah. a lot of it's been trial and error. I come from a a sales background over the last seven years, and so um, a lot of me wants to take the lead in dialogue at times, but I have, we've, we've found just as an example, we found that there's, there's opportunities where, where her strengths outshine my ability to execute on a specific task. So really it's been trial and error, but I think that the best thing that's worked for us is not getting discouraged when it comes time to self-reflect. Like mm-hmm. those, those hard moments, those, those things that we didn't execute so well, those points of growth, we really mm-hmm. lean in, and if it's not being as productive as we'd hope, just like yesterday, it's hey, let's let's put the brakes on this and pick this up when when like our headspace is at a more appropriate level, and then we can dive in more 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 appropriately to that. But mm-hmm. yeah, so so far, like to to her credit, she's she's been great at really letting me know, hey. Like this is working well for us right now. She she's like a great mediator or moderator within how we navigate things. So I'll give her credit to yeah, that. but he's yeah. also just really good at not taking things personally, which I'm not as good at, right? So like <laughs> kind of balance each other out. So like like earlier you're saying, well, what's what's a big challenge of working together? Like for me personally, it's it's accepting feedback from him. Mm-hmm. Uh, so yeah. you know, like I I just want him to think I'm the best at everything. <laughs> because he's my husband and I just said oh you know that's how my ego wants him to look at me so when he does point out an area where I can do something better um like at first my ego doesn't like that so sometimes I do need to tell him like hey I need I need a moment to like let this sit for a second and approach it in a way of of like we're a team and I I know you love me and I and you want what's what's best for for me and for us so um that's been been an area for sure where where we where we help each other out because I can tell him where I think something went wrong and he's just like okay great thanks like tell me more and I'm like I mean I wish I could right like I wish I could accept feedback in that way but I'm I'm working on it we're getting there yeah but, but then also yeah uh, really quickly also we utilize our our previous experience in our careers um to determine like roles and responsibilities she she had a previous career with a with a woman back in Illinois that was was largely online. So w- with a lot of the the specifics, the details, like she's she's gonna take the lead on that. I I I come from a, a a company where I can I can hold a sales meeting pretty well. So if it comes to outlining or 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 structuring a meeting, I, I know that like that's gonna play to, towards my strength. So we we definitely use our past experiences to determine how we operate as a couple mm-hmm. within the business. That's outstanding. <laughs> yeah, that that's really outstanding. Yeah, and that some of this just takes me back, you know, and I'm I'm looking at my own relationship and how, you know, different things come up with the communication and whatnot. Cause I remember even one time my wife was getting really busy because she has an interior design business and mm-hmm. we had um we also had a magazine, but she would do most of the design stuff. So one day I decided I was going to try to help out because she was so busy and probably because I'm, I was getting a little impatient. So I was going to try to do the design, but I, I'd have to say it was horrid, you know, it <laughs> wasn't that good at all. And she looked at it, she's like, you know what, I appreciate you trying to help. <laughs> but but we're not using this. <laughs> <laughs> and I do it, you know, I try, I try to do my best, but it was just not helping. Sometimes help is not really help when it's <laughs> causing more work and just a waste mm-hmm. of time. <laughs> so, but yeah, so I appreciate you guys, you know, being able to communicate that and finding what your strengths and knowing what your strengths are and then letting that person function in that strength as mm-hmm. opposed to, you know, trying to, to do it all. Cause I think, you know, like I said, once again, 24 hours in a day is all you get. I don't care how good, even if you are good mm-hmm. enough to do it all, 
you're probably not going to have time to do it all. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so recognizing each other's strength and then letting each other do, you know, what needs to be done is mm -hmm. that's great. Yeah. Now, what is something else? I know we talked about communication. We talked about time management. We talked about uh, staying in your lane. <laughs> what is something else that might uh, be really crucial for helping uh, couples who are also in business together? I think this. That pretty much covered it. Okay. Do you have any ideas? I so like the time management is is definitely important. But also, I think that it's really, really important to, to have your own time, like your, your own time to pour into yourself. She carves out at least an hour every morning so that she's got that for herself. And she doesn't engage with me much. We're both awake, but she's got that for her for herself. I tend to do mine um, at night. So mm -hmm. just making sure that like your your space is is there for you to nurture whatever it is within you or or to to do some self-reflection within you to to make sure that like it's not going to get bottled up internalized and you're gonna you're gonna implode so i would i would say like a crucial part in that is still figuring out where within the day is there time for yourself that's 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 gonna be huge yeah. That is an excellent, excellent point. I, I'm glad I asked the question because that is a really good point because we think about all these other relationships and a lot of times we prioritize mm -hmm. those things, but prioritizing ourselves in the madness gets neglected a lot of the times where mm -hmm. we don't take that time to make sure we're okay and that time just to be with ourselves for, you know, just kind of self-evaluation and to make, you know, checking in with ourselves to see okay, how do I feel? Am I in a good space? You know, kind of thing. We just go, go, go. And then we end up getting burned out. So mm -hmm. yeah, that's a really great point. Yeah. yeah and, and if I can add to that, I would say <laughs> a, a big thing for us is movement. And that's, so I know it's the marriage mindset movement, which we feel like can be interpreted two ways, right? It's the movement of teaching people to think differently about marriage. So it's a forward movement of that, but it's also that we think that moving your body um, is so important and and making intentional, uh, taking intentional action towards what you want. But we both know that for us to show up for each other um, in a good headspace, we need to be moving um, mm -hmm. regularly, right? Like you, like yoga, we are long distance runners. You know, if, if we're having a conflict that is just feels like it's not working out, like we'll long distance run and mm -hmm. we'll get so much clarity through torturing ourselves, <laughs> 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 which really is what it is. Right. It's just like yeah. Oh, yeah. Getting, getting uncomfortable, being alone with your thoughts and working yeah. through that. I think that is huge for us too. Yeah. 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 That's, that's true. Yeah, and it feels like torture, but it's actually one of those things where you put the energy out and the energy actually gets reciprocated mm -hmm. and you feel it later. I mean, at that moment, it's not fun at all, right? But tomorrow you get more energy because now you're 14 miles turning to 15. And mm -hmm. I say because I was talking to Nick one morning, you guys had just gotten to the gym to do this hit training class thing, and you had just run 14 miles, and I was kind of I was just flabbergasted, <laughs> like what? If I ran 14 miles, my feet would hurt so bad that, that I would be no good for doing anything else probably for the next few days, yet alone to go right to the gym to do some other kind of workout. So that is really impressive uh, on the movement. And I know people don't have to do that. That's that. Right. that as an extreme athletes, you, <laughs> you're obviously there. But, you know, just for people who aren't there, even going on a walk, right? That's still mm -hmm. moving. It's like you don't have to be able to run for miles or do hit training or anything like that, or even just doing yoga or whatever it is, that's still getting that movement in. So yeah, it's, it's, everything is energy, right? So it's how you're managing and um, like attracting more energy to yourself. So yeah, it doesn't have to be crazy, but if you do get into like, it's also like continuing to push yourself too, right? Like finding that edge and taking it a little bit more each time, because that like that area of discomfort is like where the magic happens. Yes. Right? When you push a little bit further than you want it to go, that's where that growth happens. So, you know, for some people, it might be like a, a long walk, but for others, it might be 14 miles and then a crazy workout at the gym, you know, <laughs> it's, it's, it's different for everybody, but you know yourself. And uh, if you can just, yeah, like, 
have that energy flow so that you can show up better. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's great. That That is excellent. Well, that was all the questions that I had today, except if there's nothing else, I do have one final thing, but I just wanted to make sure there was no other points that you guys wanted to make before we roll into it. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, if there's nothing else, I want people to know how they can get in touch with you all. You know, if they want to learn more about the marriage mindset movement, if they want to um, maybe have you guys as consultants or whatever, how do what's the best way for them to reach out to you? If you have social media where they can follow you, if you could share with us at this time, that would be great. Yeah. So we have a community on Facebook. So it's a private Facebook group and it's called the marriage mindset movement. Uh, we also have an email, so you can reach out through email, um, marriage.mindset.movement at gmail.com. Um, and yeah, we use we use the Facebook group to share tools and resources and to build the community um, to, you know, so ed that everybody can share ideas, right? It's not just us putting content out there, but, you know, if other married couples have come across something, they can also share. And we recently started doing our own little show on there every Saturday at 1.30 Mountain Time. Um, so we're really excited about that. You know, we we want to pour into couples and help them realize the opportunity that they've been given in their spouse. You know, that their spouse is like, it's just a great use to, for your own personal development, right? Like they will reflect to you where, <laughs> where you can work on things. And it's not always the easiest thing, mm -hmm. um, but everybody wants to, you know, be, be better and be a better version of themselves. And your spouse is an excellent person to help you get there once you can look at it that way. So we're excited to get that message out there. Um, and that would be, I would say, the two ways to get in contact with us. Yep. Outstanding. Well, thank you all very much again for coming on to share with us today. I'm sure people are going to listen to this and really appreciate uh, what the knowledge that you all provided today. So thank you. Thank you for having us. Yeah, it was fun. Yeah. I look forward to seeing you guys at Yoga on Friday. Hopefully you'll be yeah. there. <laughs> we'll be there. We'll be there. <laughs> awesome. Well, until next time, this is Venture University.